Hello, everyone. My name is Stephen Berkey here with Labrador Lending. Um, if you haven't seen my face before, just maybe a quick introduction. I'm a contract worker for Jamie, helping out on the Labrador Lending site, uh, and a couple of stuff that I help on behind the scenes. And But today, Jamie had asked me to make a video because uh, I recently completed my first marathon. So he thought it would be interesting to have me talk about kind of the parallels between my journey training and running my first marathon and my journey so far in the note investing space. And so I just wanted to talk through for a couple minutes today and a couple points around the parallels that I saw between the training and note investing uh, and how uh, they're similar as well as, again, my journey through those two areas. So I think the first thing that people always ask when I tell them that I was training for a marathon or that I ran a marathon was just, how did you decide to, or why are you running a marathon? And so I think decisions for the most part come down to very singular moments in time where we make that decision. But a lot of times there are larger long-term driving factors behind those decisions that we make. And so a couple of the driving factors that you might see um, people change behavior from uh, for example, maybe they had a birth of a child or they turned 30 or 20, you know, they had a birthday with a zero on it. Uh, you might have lost a loved one or, you know, a lot of weight loss stories seem to start when someone else took a picture and they saw themselves in the background and they were just way overweight um, and they were kind of disgusted with the, with the background photo of themselves. And so that was the kind of the initial kickoff for them to lose weight. Or you hear a lot of like financial gurus talk about maybe they didn't have enough money to buy their weekly groceries. And that was kind of the last straw for them to start on their financial journey. So whatever it is, I think decisions are made in the very in a very split second fashion. But a lot of times there's these larger forces behind the scenes. And so for me, starting the marathon, um, some of those larger forces was I was temporarily laid off my job due to COVID. Um, so I had some time to kind of sit and reflect. We were pregnant with our second child. And when we were pregnant with our first one, I gained uh, quite a bit of weight, I would say, uh, during the pregnancy. So that's something that I wanted to combat and avoid the second time around. And then I, I played sports and stuff in high school. Um, and I, I, in college, I did work out and lift weights. I mean, I kind of lost that physical goal uh, after college. And so this was one thing that was challenging for me. I've never been a lifelong, you know, I've never been a runner uh, and endurance training is something that I wasn't really exposed to. And it was definitely a challenging goal physically and mentally. And so that's why I kind of decided to run that marathon. If we look in the note investing space, this one was, I would say a little bit more gradual. Um, after college, we had some student debt. And so we were researching uh, different things to do financially to set, us, to set ourselves up for success in the long run. And we discovered real estate. And then within that real estate topic, of course, there's this subsection of note investing. And it's just something that I found uh, quite a bit more interesting than the hard uh, real estate itself. And so I decided that it might be helpful to have a mentor in the space. And so I started reaching out and becoming more involved in Facebook groups and whatnot. And that's how I ended up meeting Jamie and, and getting in with Jamie in Labrador Lending. Uh, and then after that exposure in Labrador Lending, uh, after I learned kind of the business from the inside, I felt comfortable enough to take the leap and become a note investor myself. And so that's kind of how the journey for both marathon and note investing started for me. Now, after you start, I think the next point that's very similar for both marathon training and note investing is having a plan. So I think it was Ben Franklin that said, if you, if you're, if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. And so you want to set yourself up for success. And I think there's a couple things up front that are required to do so. I think first is just an honest self-assessment of where you're at. It's really hard to have a plan if you don't know where to start. And so I did that for both marathon training and note investing. The second part is you need to have a goal. So where do you want to end up? What's What does end state look like? I think a lot of times uh, especially like on the investing side or on the like uh, personal finance. Uh, everybody wants to be quote unquote rich, but a lot of people don't really understand what is required 
uh, as an end state. So looking at your finances, determining what cash flow do you actually need to hit your goal that you want? Because most likely it's going to be less than you think. Most people think they need 10,000, 20,000 a month. It, it's probably not that high. So I think that exercise is worth going through is to really understand what does that end state look like? And that'll help you plan um, from where you are to where you want to go. And I think that's the third point is once you understand where you are and where you need to be, you need to come up with the middle, the, the plan of how you get from where you are to where you want to be. And so for the marathon, you know, I was, when I started, I was way out of shape. I was running, I think I struggled with one eight minute mile. And so a kind of a challenging goal was to have that eight minute per mile pace for the entire marathon. And that, that evens out to about three and a half hours. And so I struggled at the beginning with one mile at eight minutes. I wanted, my goal was eight minutes per mile for an entire marathon. And for the plan part, I did some research and found an 18 week program that was supposed to get me um, from where I was to that goal time. Um, unfortunately, uh, I did not re reach that goal. And I'll talk about that a little bit later uh, on my second, or on my, one of the later points I'm gonna talk about. You know, as far as no investing, um, we had some, we, our financial shape was decent. Like I mentioned, we had some, some student loan debt and we built some general knowledge around real estate investing. Um, but again, I, I wasn't extremely comfortable jumping all in just by myself. And so that's my part of my plan was to reach out to note investors to understand the business from the inside. And so that's what I'm doing right now. I'm working the inside of my plan uh, to get to my end goal. As far as a shorter term goal for note investing, we had set a goal of five notes in 2021. We're currently at three notes and we're coming up here on July. So we're on, we're on pace to hit that goal. Um, but different challenges have come up, uh, financing, for instance. So uh, the second half of the year might be a little bit more challenging to still hit that goal. The third point, and I hope this doesn't contradict the second because the intention is not to contradict myself, but once you have a plan to start, you really want to avoid overcomplicating the plan. And so it's very easy at the beginning to get very detailed and I'm an engineer by trade. So I'm literally the textbook definition of paralysis by analysis. And you want to avoid that. So I'll give you a couple of examples. When I started running, uh, what you don't want to do, especially if you're new to running, you know, I was spending a lot of time on research and running forms, looking at what shoes I should be wearing, uh, what style or support structure the shoe should have, uh, what running shorts I should wear, shirts I should wear, what watches are the best. If I got a five mile run, I'd be on Google Earth looking for different routes to run. And so I was exactly five miles. I was looking up issues with overtraining, undertraining, et cetera. So <laughs> I think I was, I was getting way too involved on the front end before I had even started running. And so what we really should be focused on at the beginning is just getting started. In the note investing space, there's something very similar that happens. There is a ton of information out there around real estate and note investing. There's almost unlimited books, podcasts, Facebook groups, paid courses, unpaid courses, etc. There's a within the note investing space, there's a ton of different strategies. You can broker notes, you can buy performing, non-performing, all the different steps involved. So how do you find notes? What does your purchasing criteria look like? What do you do for due diligence? What's the paperwork side? How do you board it with a servicer? You know, so it's very easy at the beginning to get overwhelmed. So I think the important thing is to realize that there's always risk in any, anything that you do. And I think the most important thing at the beginning of starting something new is really to get that experience and that learning <clears throat> in as fast as you can. And then you can optimize down the road. So, you know, once you start running, for instance, 20, 30 miles a week, then worry about what kind of shorts you have or what kind of watch information or data that you can pull. But don't put, don't worry about that stuff at the front. It's the more, the most important thing is just to get started. You can always improve and optimize later down the road. So just keep that in mind with whatever you are starting, anything new that is applicable. The fourth thing I wanted to talk about is it really, it really doesn't get easier. Um, and this is kind of a, I don't know if you want to call it the, 
a piece of advice, but I think if, if you're, if you're always progressing, that task that you're doing never really gets easier. So I, I think it's in the book Principles by Ray Dalio. Um, but he says, you know, consider the Olympic runner. His job is just as difficult or his activity is just as difficult as the novice. They're just performing at way different levels. So at the beginning, things are really, really difficult. Um, you, you're improving, you're working on the basics. Um, but to get better, you always kind of have to be pushing your limits. And so I, I talked about earlier that at the beginning of my running, I was at eight minute per mile, eight minute per mile for one mile. That was pretty tough. You know, I was breathing. I had that itchy lung that you get when you're really out of shape. Um, but 10 months later, during the marathon race itself, I was holding that same eight minute per mile for the first 20 miles. And so that was just as difficult as the eight minute per mile for one mile. But obviously, it's a much different level of performance. So in the note investing space, there's something very similar. I started buying one performing note, and that was pretty uncomfortable. You know, just jumping into the space, learning about the servicing transfers, doing some due diligence and deal analysis. And then I moved into buying a non-performing note, which is something new. And there's a whole different level of learning there. Uh, it was looking at contract for deeds, what states, have, you know, state rules, legal requirements, and then you get into asset management and system development. So as you expand, you're kind of constrained sometimes by the systems that you're using, uh, researching and using different servicers. And then, you know, eventually, if you have a lot of notes and you want you want to pursue this, you expand into funds. And so you're constantly learning and growing. Uh, but at the same time, that that is always an area that you're feeling uncomfortable, uh, even though. If you have 100 notes, buying one performing note now isn't that big of a deal, but there's always that next level. And it always, uh, it, it should never really get easier if, you, if your goal is to keep progressing. I think the last point I wanna talk about today is sometimes you just don't hit your goals. And that was the case in my marathon that I had alluded to earlier. Um, I was shooting for a three and a half hour marathon and I ran in just under a 345. So I was about 15 minutes slower than my goal time. Um, but I think the important thing here is you want to be aggressive in your goals, both for motivation uh, and results. And so I think it's better to set an aggressive goal and get 80, 90 percent of the way to that aggressive goal than it is to be a conservative goal setter and always hit your goals. So I think the intention of goals should be a motivator and they should be challenging. They should uh, they should be pushing you to the next level and just realize that it's okay if you don't exactly hit your goals all the time. Um, you don't want to make them so difficult where you're not hitting any of your goals and then you might lose that motivation and drive to continue progressing. Uh, but you don't always want to hit your goals. I think that's a little silly to, it's a, kind of a silly metric. It's more of a target. And if you, if you don't hit it, um, just make sure that you don't feel down and, and you can keep uh, feeling positive about the growth that you're seeing. I think one thing that's really helped me um, with this is that really to look, it's kind of that growth, that growth idea is to really look at where you, what level you're on after your goal, even if you didn't hit it. So like the marathon, um, at the beginning of this, again, that eight minute per mile for one mile, I was at like an 830 pace for my entire marathon. So yes, I was slightly disappointed that I didn't hit that 330. But at the same time, I was way, way better than I was when I started training for it. So just keep that in perspective. You know, and as far as the note side goes, I'm still very new to the business. My goal was five notes this year, three so far. But again, we don't have that clear line of sight to the next two notes. Uh, we're running into new challenges. Uh, the money side is becoming more challenging just because we're, we're kind of, quote unquote, spent uh, our money that we had saved up for notes. And so now we're exploring different avenues. Um, but I think, again, be aggressive in your goals and but realize that they're more for growth and development than they are um, to, for actually hitting that goal. That's not the important thing. The important thing is that growth and progress. So those are five things today that I just wanted to kind of walk through the parallels between uh, my experience with training and running my marathon 
versus my growth and development in the note investing space. And so I hope you found that useful. Thank you.